So does skin color impact my spirituality? As I said, that is a very racist question. The idea is to be always conscious that your physical self is just an outcrop of the land that you walk upon. Your mind is. So the important thing is your body and your mind should not become an impediment. This question is from Isabel. Sadhguru, I heard you speaking about the impact of wearing clothes with the different colors. Also, the monks in Isha and in India wear orange as it helps in their spiritual journey. I want to ask a question if wearing certain colors can impact our spiritual growth. What is the impact of the color of the skin on our spiritual journey? This is a racist question <laughs> in India don't wear orange clothes, they largely color their clothes with the soil, with red earth because uh, we want to exist here as understanding always, existentially understanding, experientially understanding that what my body is, is just an outcrop. So there is a tradition in India of uh, going and uh, meditating near anthills. Uh, in this part of the world, I have not seen anthills growing like this. Do you have? I have not seen any in this region. Uh, but in southern India, everywhere in the country, generally in the tropical country, the anthills grow like that and people believe or for a long time believe that uh, this is a snake house. Because snakes go inside for in search of some protein, because the termites are super rich in protein. Because this whole thing that they build, they are mixing with their saliva, which is a very high quality protein, very, very high quality protein. They are mixing with the soil and they are building it that it withstands any kinds of monsoon, any kind of weather. Architecturally, it's fantastic. And uh, in a way, uh, our buildings are also in the Isha Yoga Center in India designed like a termite hill. I learnt engineering from them. Because I did go into the termite hills for various reasons myself. <laughs> uh, but it is said, some of the tunnels going up to seven hundred kilometers, a termite can locate water seven hundred kilometers away and go there, digging up a tunnel. Uh, a lot of people who don't have any water divining capabilities have this tendency to believe where there is a termite hill, there will be water and they dig wells near a termite hill, but it could be seven hundred kilometers away <laughs> It's happened to quite a few people that they did not find any water. Sometimes it is true. So, the idea is to be always conscious that your physical self is just an outcrop of the land that you walk upon. That's not of great significance, keeping it well is important. Keeping it well is important not to flaunt to other people, but keeping it well is important so that it doesn't come in your way. 
it doesn't come in your way means, if your body becomes troublesome because of, let's say, some health issue, then hundred percent of your attention will be only on that body. Taking care of the body will be hundred percent of your time and life. So keeping the body in such a way, if you sit here, you're not even aware that it's here. Otherwise, um, you know, the various compulsive cycles in the body will keep you busy all the time. You should have seen uh, the initial arguments when I came to this country and I said, uh, the sessions are three hours long. They said, no way, our bladder capacity is only 1.5 hours. We have… we need a break, otherwise we can't do it. Well, after the second day, nobody asks for a break, that's a different matter. But first day when they come, they say, no, this looks tyrannical, three hours, no toilet. Why did they build so many if we cannot go and use it? <laughs> Toilets are not built for you to use it by choice. When the body's compulsions demand, we use it. But when the compulsive cycles are too short, then this keeps you busy all the time. Eating, toilet, relieving yourself endlessly, this will keep you busy. But once a certain ailment or pain or something manifests in the body, it will keep you hundred percent busy. So keeping it well is not about showing it off to somebody, how my body is. Keeping it well is it's not in your way, it's not an impediment, it's a platform upon which you can stand. The same goes for the mental structure and mental structures, which I know many people will start an argument on this, but your mental structure and your physical structures are very connected. If you keep your physical structure and the cycles in the body at a certain level of stability, Psychological stability is a kind of a consequence. Well, people will argue because they think mind is a separate world by itself. Yes, their mind is <laughs> because it's a separate mind, it's not… it's a separate world, it's not here. But your brain is also body, isn't it? And today you know, if you have psychological problems, you don't inject something into your head, you put a pill in your stomach and it works. So obviously, physiological stability, the chemical stability in the body is vital for how your mind is. So the important thing is your body and your mind should not become an impediment especially for one who is focused on something beyond that, he doesn't want his body to come in the way. So sannyasis are wearing clothes which are washed in soil because the best way to make the body stable is to be connected to the earth. Today various Quasi sciences are coming up and they say people are sleeping with a copper wire attached to their big toe and earth it in the ground and all kinds of things. All you have to do is uh, maybe in this country, in this kind of weather, you cannot really walk barefoot all over the place, but at least indoors you walk barefoot. At least indoors, that's not really earth so much is in between you and earth, but at least there because still there is a benefit. So this is like earth covering yourself because your clothing has the quality of the earth and it connects you in so many ways, keeps your body aside and you're always conscious that your body is a part of this earth. So even when death comes, you don't have a great amount of struggle because you know anyway it was a part of this always. 
But in your head you can imagine things just to stop that imagination. So does skin color impact my spirituality? As I said, that is a very racist question. But now anyway you ask, so why should I miss the opportunity? This is the best skin color. <laughs> if you want to be spiritual, you must burn yourself to this, otherwise you're not going to make it. So based on skin color, will you get there or not, is like this. I was, uh, you know the other day, two days ago I was driving out near Fall Creek Fall and two guys, a little soaked up in mud and they suddenly came out of the forest. <laughs> they had parked their truck somewhere close by and they came towards the truck. Then I saw they were carrying crossbow, you know they had arrows and a crossbow. So they are hunters. When I looked at them, the first thing, the way they were soaked in earth, because they have been lying there somewhere and uh, previous night there has been rains in the area, so they are all kind of a little damp with that. It reminded me of my days in the forest. Well, I never took a crossbow because I had no intention of hunting, but <laughs> just being in the forest, after a week, these guys were out just for a couple of hours or maybe a few hours. I was out there for weeks when I came back, uh, soil was everywhere, you know. You had to come and clean your ears, your nostrils and everything because earth will soak into you. <laughs> but they had cr crossbows. Let's say if these two guys, next time they went hunting in the month of December, they got lost. The game warden had told them, when you get lost, don't worry. If you get lost in the mountains, don't worry, just fire three shots in the air. I will come and find you. So they got lost and they fired three shots, nothing happened. They left another fifteen minutes, fired three more, nothing happened. Another fifteen minutes they fired three more, nothing happened. Then they got desperate. Then one guy said, I have only three arrows left. <laughs> so, if you're looking at your skin color and thinking whether you will get enlightened or not, <laughs> well, uh, you're really not even going skin deep, you know. <laughs> this is the color of the skin is not even skin deep, you know. It's too much surface, don't stay there. You need to get a little deeper than that. So.